So I drove from work to the UQ charger, 8 kilometers, 108 watt hours per kilometer, including highway driving. So the last 10 kilometers, 99 watt hours per kilometers. I told you I can do it. Okay, and we click on start. Please wait. It's not working with the app. The app is not connected to this one. It recognizes that the plug is plugged in, but it doesn't start from the app. Because someone said here, this station now needs the ChargeFox app to buy a recharge time. You can only, only, only use this charging station with a charge hook. No, this is not correct anymore. I should. Yep. And one of my followers put in, please hang up the Tesla cable in its holder when you are done charging. <laughs> Good on you. And we just had a discussion uh, on my last video. Well, the last video I just posted now. In regards to AC or DC charging and my good old friend uh, David from Austria said um, he's only or he's mostly charging um, AC and he's using DC only when he's traveling and there's no other opportunity or he needs the yeah he hasn't got time to charge on AC then so and I said look the DC charging I'm doing here with the 40 kilowatt 44 kilowatt uh, DC fast charger is not really fast for the battery pack and I mentioned this earlier in one of my other videos saying this is under 1C for the battery pack so it's not but he linked a video from uh, Pion Nieland um, a while back in regards to this and I just paused the video here to show you guys and it really says uh, the DC charge limiting is set to start at 2625 kilowatt hours and reaches maximum at 13125 kilowatt hours and this is for a special case over there they're discussing in there so obviously uh, um, if you reach 2625 kilowatt hours charged on DC it will slow down your charging speed especially when you do um, especially when you do fast charging of course so it doesn't say anything from Tesla here in regards to supercharging it says only DC charging it says this is a normal function of the battery to avoid loss of range caused by a high DC charging use so the more I charge DC here the more uh, the the quicker I reach this 2625 kilowatt hours well I probably have only charged here maybe a hundred kilowatt hours or so all in total now so I'm far far away from this stuff but um, this is this is interesting to consider if you charge your car um, you should AC charge as much as possible then apparently but this is a very interesting um, interesting note from Tesla here. So I wasn't aware that they are counting DC fast charging regardless if it is 30 kilowatts or 130 kilowatts. Because the 30 kilowatts is clearly not as aggressive than the uh, um, supercharging. And I've never done any supercharging at all so far. But this is very good and valuable information of course here. So I linked this uh, link uh, Bjorn's uh, video in the description down below as well. This is mostly about supercharging but the re um, response from Tesla says um, high DC charge use. They don't um, differ between supercharging and Shademo charging or CCS charging or something. So that's quite interesting. Um, I need to tell you this whole case, what they are showing here, is about a Model S. Oh yeah, it says it over there, 75D 2016. So this number may not be correct for the Model 3 anymore. It may be higher, higher or lower. That was uh, very good information from you, David, from Austria. Thanks. But um, as I said, I don't know if the, all these numbers are still correct. This is an older video as well from uh, Bjorn here. So I don't know, these numbers may not be correct and then may not apply for Model 3 either. Ah, 
Jeez, that was a quick top up, 15 minutes, and we are already at 320 kilometers. Ah, you know, unlock the port. Thank you. That was 17 kilowatt hours only. And cable beautifully. Let's do an experiment. So what we do, we lock the car and we turn on sentry mode. So sentry mode is now on, but it's not active as long as I'm in the area of the car with my phone. So turning off Bluetooth, going stealth. So car doesn't know I'm here. And we will see if sentry mode actually activates now and if something is on recording. So let's see. Or is it not turning on because I told the car not to turn on sentry mode at home? Maybe it has a GPS location and it doesn't turn on. Let's see what happens if we... Oh, there we go. Sentry activated. Okay, so it's recording now. And now all these cameras should record into the Sentry event folders. Okay, so let's turn this off and check the footage. There we go. Allow, view events, yes. Yeah, here we go. You can see me running around the car. So why is there nothing on there when this big monster truck next to me um, disappeared, when they left? There's no recording, there's no trigger of the actual event when the car left. That's a bit upsetting. Well, I have now ordered a USB 3 to a micro SD card adapter and hopefully this will, uh, this will solve the problem with the slow connection to the USB. I think this is the main problem that the I think the speed of the adapter is not enough to uh, save all the recordings of the sentry event. So we will see. Well, this car is so dope. Well, it gets constantly updated. And just wait until the PHEV, <laughs> and just wait until the Tesla watchdog is here and we can set everything up. Yeah, so I'm really excited for the Tesla watchdog for the scan my Tesla, whatever it's called officially the Tesla watchdog to arrive here and down under. We will make heaps of videos then, we will make sense of all the figures, we will have a look at numbers, we will start testing again. I've prepared the whiteboard already, everything is clean, everything is ready to go. We just need the hardware to arrive here and then we will have so much footage. It will be amazing. Okay guys, until then, you stay charged and this is Andy from Unplugged TV Australia signing off. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.